Welcome to another video. My name is Yvonne and I make videos about my life in China, travels in China here on GoYvonne. You guys voted on my community tab. Most of you wanted to see a video of my winter trip to Heilongjiang. Well, here we are. I'm gonna show you what my trip to Heilongjiang was like and what you can do if you have about a week time. In this video, I will share my highlights of the ice festival, the snow sculptures, Zhongyang Street and you will see the cutest winter town you've ever seen, China Snow Town. I will also give you some travel advice for when you are planning a trip to Heilongjiang and Harbin to make it all go a little bit easier. I started a trip in Harbin. The hotel I was staying at was located at Zhongyang Street, which is in the center of the city and a really great location. After walking down the street, I ended up at the Stalin Park right next to the river. I'm walking along the uh, solid frozen river now after we visited Stalin Park and we looked at how they were making the ice sculptures, really cool. So you can go across the river on cable car, but the much cooler thing to do is to walk across the river and that is exactly what I'm going to do. Uh, there's a lot of people on the ice already on playing on sleighs and just having fun. It looks really cool. park is really big and there are many many sculptures some are smaller some are really large like maybe two three stories high and I think the biggest was like 50 meters wide if not more with so many sculptures in the park it's easy to spend a couple of hours there luckily there are a few places where you can warm up because it does get cold I spent a lot of time in the snow sculpture park and by the time I was done there it was already dark and instead of crossing the river back to the center of the city, uh, I took the cable car across the river, which is actually quite fun. And I recommend doing it because it gives a nice view over the city when you're up in the cable cars. The next day was, I think, the best day of the trip or one of the best days because that was the day I visited the ice sculpture festival. If you have seen the video in which I show you the highlights of my visit to the ice festival, you know what I'm talking about. It was just amazing and unbelievable. I've been wanting to go for years and finally I made it and it was just better than I had expected. The sculptures are so large, you can walk on them, there are slides. Make sure you have enough time because also in this park it's easy to spend a lot of hours here. Even though it gets cold, the cold doesn't bother you anymore after a while because every time you walk somewhere else you'll see another great sculpture that you are so amazed by that you forget about how cold it is. But if you do get cold, also in this park there are different places where you can go in and warm up, have something to eat or have something to drink. Tip, if you don't want to get cold feet, get little feet warmers. Most people go to Harbin for just the ice and snow festival, which makes sense because those are the main attractions. But in the province of Heilongjiang, there is more that you can do. If you have a little bit more time to spend in Harbin, consider going out to Yaboli. It's only an hour and a half by train from Harbin and it's a great place for skiing. I just went down the slopes for two hours and had a lot of fun. And then at the end of the day, you can hit the train back up and you can go back to the city. So a perfect day trip for those who like skiing. Walking around the little town can be nice too, especially when it starts to snow, like it did during my trip there. From Yabali, it's easy to take a little bus to go to China Snow Town. Check in with your accommodation to see if they can arrange tickets for you for that bus if you can't do it on your own. I bought my tickets online through WeChat, which is super easy if you have WeChat. The trip from Yabali to China Snow Town takes about two hours when the weather is good. In my case, the weather wasn't so good. We were going through a blizzard. 
After about four hours, we arrived at China Snowtown. As soon as I drove into the town, I could see that this was going to be the cutest town I had ever seen. The lanterns everywhere and the roofs covered with snow made it look like a fairy tale. I felt like I had stepped into some kind of dream world. After walking around for a little bit through the snow town and after getting some dinner at a military themed restaurant, it was time to go back to our cottage, warm up and go to bed. The next morning I woke up, had some breakfast and was ready to go outside and explore the snow town. The plan was to go into the forest and walk around, see the beautiful trees and enjoy the scenery. But that plan changed a little bit once we saw and realized that the path that we were walking on was meant for horses and their sleighs. It actually turned out to be a quite funny experience when Miguel got almost attacked by a horse and almost disappeared in the snow. <laughs> that horse came right at me! <laughs> what that horse was doing? Oh boy, I'm in the snow down. It just came right at you? Right and what did you do? Did you just jump? I jumped over. <laughs> I said, I don't want to get hit by a horse. <laughs> As that walk in the forest wasn't going to happen, we decided to keep it safe, away from the horses, and we discovered a boardwalk on the back street of the main street, the main walking street, and right behind it there was a boardwalk. So we decided to walk along that boardwalk. And that turned out to be a really good idea. There was hardly anyone there, because in the morning all the Chinese tourists go back to Harbin, so we had the area pretty much for ourselves. If there is one thing that you should do in China Snowtown, it's like walk that boardwalk, because it is just really pretty with all the trees covered in snow. If you are staying a little bit longer in the Snowtown, there are a few more things that you can do. As I mentioned earlier, you can go on a horse sleigh, go around the town, there are also people with dog sleds, so you can go on a dog sled ride. On the outside part of the area, there are a few hills where you can slide down the hill on a tube. There is also a ski lift, so you can go up the mountain and ski back down. And you can rent scooters. So if you are spending some time there, like two days, there are plenty of things that you could do if you are willing to pay for them. After an evening and a day in the China Snowtown, we headed back to Harbin. The bus ride from China Snowtown to Harbin takes about 5 hours and the bus brings you back to the city center. Back in Harbin, there were a few more things that I wanted to see and do. To begin with, I wanted to visit the Sofia Cathedral. The Sofia Cathedral is a former Russian Orthodox Church and is located in the district of Dali in Harbin. The cathedral is worth a visit as it is quite unique for China. I also wanted to walk through Zhongyang Street one more time. There is one famous street here in Harbin that you should really go to when you're visiting the city. It is Zhongyang Street, which is a pedestrian street. It's a really nice street with lots of light and there are a lot of food stalls. The food stalls sell a lot of the famous Harbin snacks like the ice cream, the tang kulu and more. We are going to eat some of the things that you should try as well. One of the things you should try and that are typical Chinese and typical for Harbin are the tang kulu. Tang means candy. So it's like a sugar candy. Yes. Um, and so this is the traditional Hawthorne one. I don't actually like that. And then we got one with strawberries and pineapples and uh, also a Hawthorne. Oh, but yeah. these are kind of more traditional yeah. These ones. are the so traditional ones? Uh, bite into it. Right, I'll I'm gonna try this one also. <laughs> ah. Ah. Oh, they're solid and frozen. <laughs> they're frozen. It makes sense because they've been outside. After almost losing my teeth, it was time to eat something a little bit softer. Next on my list to try in Harbin was the famous Madi R ice cream. People actually line up for this ice cream because it's supposedly super tasty. So, what else could I do than try it for myself? It might seem an odd thing to do, to eat ice cream when it's like minus 20 degrees Celsius, but it is one of the things that you should really try when you are in Harbin. The 1906 store uh, has a lot of ice cream in different flavors. I got the coffee flavor, and I'm gonna lie into it. Mmm! Oh! Yeah, very intense flavor. Not like watery at all. 
It's really fluffy. It's pretty good. delicious coffee ice cream we have come to the end of this highlight video i hope you enjoyed watching it and that you have an idea of what else there is to do and see around harbin if you liked this video please give it a thumbs up i would really appreciate it and if you want to see more of my videos subscribe to my channel if you are interested in seeing more about the harbin ice festival or the snow sculptures click on one of those videos as they pop up in the screen thank you and see you next time